ja. Eller, I'm going to introduce Dr. Jett. I'm sure y'all all know who she is. And uh, she's going to introduce the process that we're going to take tonight and how we're going to work through this. And again, I will encourage if you've got something on your mind, something you'd like to get out, this is a perfect opportunity. No right, no wrong. But uh, definitely don't look back a week from now or a month from now and say, man, I sure wish I'd have asked that. So this is the perfect night. And if you don't like speaking in public, which I can understand that, if you'll get that question to Dr. Majette, on Ms. Clary back there, we'll be sure to uh, get you some answers and get them all perfect. So, yeah, thank y'all. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Jet. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so as Mr. Ward stated, the Board and Steering Committee has been working through this facilities process for the last three school years. Um, and the purpose of the facility study is not only to provide shelter due to aging facilities, but to provide a learning environment that's conducive to 21st century learning. Um, I want to give out a little bit of information um, about our schools because there were some misconceptions. Um, currently, due to the pandemic, all of the schools across the state are accreditation waived. Um, and then prior to the pandemic, we had four of our schools that were fully accredited and one that was accredited with conditions. So we didn't have any unaccredited schools. Um, so I wanted to put that out there as you start framing um, your thoughts about this process. So the consolidation and construction of a new facility will provide opportunities for collaboration, shared learning spaces, and opportunities for new instructional programs. In addition, Brunswick, along with the rest of the nation, we're faced with um, significant teacher shortages. So the consolidation and construction of either option presented tonight will provide us an opportunity to pool personnel and instructional resources to benefit all students. We all know that exposure and access are the greatest equalizer for students, and the facilities process has reaffirmed that Brunswick County Public Schools deserve much more. So tonight, you will hear a presentation from Mr. Josh Bauer from Crabtree, Raw Bar, and Associates. And at the conclusion of his presentation, at the public will have an opportunity to comment or ask questions. Please note, we will gather all of your questions and comments and create a document. We've actually already created a document. Um, we started that with our first meeting on May 17th at Russell, um, at Tetero, pertaining Russell and Tetero families. And we have that on our website now. But as you ask questions or you make comments tonight, um, don't feel uncomfortable if we don't respond. Um, but we're going to gather all those responses and put it on the website, and we will share that out via school messenger um, when we when we gather all that information. So each speaker, when you come up, we'll, you'll have three minutes to speak. It's no exception to that. We have to adhere to this timeline to be equitable and fair to all involved. And we will review these guidelines again after Mr. Bauer's presentation. Um, after tonight, we do have a survey that's located on the division website. Please um, complete that survey, give us some feedback. Your feedback is much needed. Um, as we go through this process. And then if you need assistance completing the survey, just visit the office of the um, nearest school that you're located. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Josh Bauer. Thank you, Dr. Chad. So good evening. Uh, I am uh, Josh Bauer, uh, Principal and uh, Senior Project Manager and Architect at Crabtree Wall Associates. Uh, as uh, Dr. Rujet said, we spent the last three years together working on a series of options. Um, tonight, we're going to um, talk about the, uh, uh, the, the selected two. Uh, we're going to talk about the, um, the options for a replacement elementary and elementary middle school. Uh, we're also going to look at some optional sites. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick five minute break, um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about athletics um, at, the, at the high school facility. Uh, so, diving right in. Uh, so, option number one. Uh, so option number one is a pre-K through six elementary school. Uh, this will be an, uh, this will be a replacement elementary school uh, for Red Oak, Totero, um, and Meharry Carlton um, elementaries. Uh, the, uh, uh, we would also be looking at a seventh and eighth grade addition uh, that would be a replacement for the middle school. Uh, so uh, what this would do is take us from uh, from seven buildings down to three buildings. Uh, also, the tech center we receive uh, capital improvements. Um, and we'd be looking to close the current school board office um, and locate either an addition or a freestanding building at the high school campus uh, with this option. Uh, so looking at the pros and cons of this option. Uh, so, so this would uh, consolidate, uh, consolidate all the elementary schools down. 
uh, it would take us from a total of seven educational buildings down to three. Um, if the high school site is selected, we're going to talk about three options tonight for the uh, for the elementary school or elementary middle school. Uh, that would place all of the educational buildings at the high school campus. Uh, the construction phasing. So, so from a construction phasing standpoint, what we want to try to do with any um, uh, school improvement project is to try to limit the amount of disruption for the educational program. Uh, that's noise, dust, dirt, uh, you know, flow of traffic. We want to try to reduce that. Uh, so with the replacement elementary school, we can construct the new building uh, with the prefer with, with, to prefer from a timing standpoint to wrap that up over a spring. Um, at the end of the semester, uh, the teachers, the students would box up their stuff, um, and that over the summer we would move all of the all of the, the boxes, supplies, and books from the existing elementary schools or the middle school over to the new facilities. Um, and when when the teachers and students all come back in the fall, uh, they'd be all the new in, in all new facilities. Uh, so some other pros, uh, some other pros of, of the consolidated elementary is that instead of having multiple elementary schools uh, where you have uh, uh, where you can have classroom size changes, and that's a teacher to student ratio. In one building you may have 12, 12 third graders, in another building you may have 21, and another building you may have 28. Um, if all of those third grades are in one building, now you can have equity across those classes, and it says a fair equity so that way that the, the student to teacher ratio is similar across them. Um, also, this allows the teachers to be able to have a lot of collaboration, you know, amongst their grades. So all the third grade teachers, all the first grade teachers, all the pre K teachers are going to be in one building. They get to talk, see each other on a daily basis. Hey, this is working for me. This is not working. They can do all their planning together. Uh, so if everybody's in one building, there's a lot of opportunity those teachers have um, to, to not only, you know, improve the program, but also help, help each other out. Um, so if the high school campus is selected for the new elementary school, uh, that, uh, that there would also be uh, the, the ability for all students on a daily basis to enjoy the athletic facilities on the, uh, at the high school campus. Uh, so we're looking at cons. Uh, really the biggest con for this option um, is that the division would be closed into three elementary schools and the middle school with this option. So when we look at an option, uh, so it, it, not just with these two, but with all of the options, uh, we want to look at not just the construction cost, but also operations and maintenance, uh, the uh, the cost of utilities, um, energy costs, uh, transportation. You know, th those are all pieces of the puzzle that we want to make sure that we fully understand and vet, um, and we're calculating as we put these together. Uh, so when we look at the the cost of construction for the new elementary school, uh, the the high school addition for the, to make it a seven twelve. Uh, the capital improvements of the tech center and also the school board office. We're looking at a range cost of about 43 to 48 million dollars for all of those projects, looking at both uh, construction and capital improvements. Uh, when we give you those numbers, those numbers are a total project cost. So it's not just construction; it's also your permitting costs, your uh, your, your costs for uh, for undergrounds, for your design fees. It's, it's a, it, we're looking at a total project cost um, because again, we need to make sure that we have all of the numbers in, and it's not well. You know, it's 43 million, but oh, there's all these extra costs. And next thing you know, it's, it's 45 or 48 million dollars. That, that's not fair to you. Um, and we want to make sure that all of the costs are part of the equation. Uh, so, so not only do we want to look at the cost of, of the total project, uh, but again, the, the potential savings that you could observe, you know, by having a more energy efficient building, uh, by having a, a new, new, new structure where you've got a, a, a new roof and new windows and lighting. Uh, so, you know, with that, you're going to have less maintenance costs because you're going to have less replacement. Uh, the, the staff, instead of replacing light bulbs on, on a daily basis, you know, by going with LED fixtures, uh, those bulbs last anywhere from 20 to 25 years. Uh, so that staff can then be can be utilized in better ways, maintain you know maintaining other pieces of the of the, uh, of the facility. Uh, so when we compare your current operations, you know, utilities, maintenance, transportation versus what the estimate of what it would look like with the new uh, with the new replacement elementary school and the addition of the high school. We're estimating a cost savings of about $1.2 million a year of in cost savings just on your on those extra costs, those things that you're observing right now. Um, why does that matter? Well, that's those dollars that you can allocate in, in better places towards education. Um, but the one thing I do want to point out is that that's the start. Uh, so as a building starts to age, you know, and all buildings age, and, and eventually you're going to have to start to replace windows and, and gaskets and, and, and ceiling tiles and things are going to happen. Is that that cost saving is going to slowly reduce over a 20 year period um, you know, to get you to, you know, closer to where you're going to have to start to do other replacements, you know, so boilers, compressors, things like that are going to fail over time. 
Uh, but what's important is that in the beginning, you know, we're expecting to set around at about $1.2 million cost savings per year um, on operation maintenance and um, in those costs. Uh, so what, what could the design look like? Um, what we're showing here is a, is a pre-schematic diagram. This is not a design. Uh, the design process is, is kind of the next step. Um, if, if the board and supervisors decide to move forward with the funding and the project, uh, we would actually begin the design process. And that's about an eight, eight to 10 month process uh, to get us through that piece to where we can, get, we can have instruction drawings to be able to give to a contractor to give us final pricing. Uh, so what we're showing here is a, is a, uh, is a sample site plan. Uh, so the, the building could be kind of an E and a J shape. Uh, from a site perspective, with, a new, with new construction, we're going to be able, be able to clearly separate cars and buses. Uh, we love bus drivers uh, and we love parents, but we all know that bus drivers are not the problem when there's congestion at the site. Uh, as a parent myself, we're all, we're all, you know, we're all victims of it. Uh, but with a with a clear path of changing the car and the bus drop off and having a clear separation, it makes it much easier for us to get that flow of traffic, get folks in and out of the site safely, um, and in, the, in, a, in a timely manner. We're also showing parking, um, additional parking areas, uh, playground for uh, both the pre-K and K, um, and your older students at the elementary school, um, and additional uh, elementary athletic facilities on the site. Uh, so again, this is a schematic diagram. Uh, so this is uh, an example of what the elementary school could look like uh, with their front entrance uh, located right here. This would be a secure vestibule front entrance uh, administration. Uh, when we're, when we're trying to place a building together uh, is that we want the, the littlest legs to be closest to the front entrance and also closest to the commons areas, the gym, the cafeteria. Uh, so we're showing the pre-K and K down here, you know, some art classrooms. Uh, the building is separated with what, uh, with what we like to call a main street. Um, and that main street separates the commons you know, from, from the from the student area. Uh, so, uh, commons are your gymnasiums, your cafeteria. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we're showing a, uh, a gymnasium and a cafeteria with a shared stage. And what that means is there's an opening on both sides of the stage. Uh, so, depending on what, the, what type of venue you'd like to see, whether it's a, something a little bit more intimate, you can have that in the cafeteria uh, with a smaller group. Or if you want to have a large group of parents or students, uh, you can have that in the uh, in the gymnasium. You know, and there's there's the, there's an opening on both sides of the stage to allow that maximum amount of flexibility, um, and that's one thing you're going to hear a lot about tonight. Is you're going to hear a lot about collaboration and a lot about flexibility when we're, when we're looking to design any building. Um, so what we're showing is a wing for each grade. So first grade, second grade, third grade. Uh, uh, we're uh, we're showing the uh, the appropriate amount of classrooms placed on the enrollment. Plus, uh, we're showing the, the ability for um, these four classrooms for expansion. Uh, so. Um, with the current enrollment, uh, so we're, we're showing enough classrooms, with, and then the orange classrooms can be utilized right now for collaborative space, uh, can be used for learning support, a bunch of different, uh, uh, you have a lot of different options. And, uh, you know, as the division grows and you see enrollment increase, uh, we have the ability to convert those those uh, specialty rooms into a classroom. They have the exact same size, they'll have the exact same amenities in them. Uh, we're, we're, so we're intentionally showing that this model has the ability for growth. Uh, so, so we have you know, each each level has great those and in those are everything from toilet rooms uh, to to specialty type of classrooms, storage, um, electrical rooms, uh, and then we have collaboration labs at each also at each one of those intersecting points. We'll show you some images in a few minutes of what those collaboration labs could look like, and also the learning stair, which is located here in the center of the building. Um, as I said, in the light blue areas of art and music are located uh, flanking uh, both of the sides of the commons area. As we go to the second floor. Uh, we would have the media center located directly above the administration area, uh, so the building for, for some STEM classrooms or other specialty classrooms, and then fourth, fifth, and sixth grade could be located on the second floor. Again, little legs on the lower floor, bigger legs on the upper floor. Uh, and then, so this is the example of that learning stair. Uh, so here's some examples of what your classrooms could look like. Uh, so there's a whole programming effort, a whole ed specs and, and, uh, effort that we, that, we, that we go through to make sure that are we, are we putting fixed storage in or is it going to be new storage? What type of chairs do you want? What type of tables? You want to have them, you know, you want to have high top tables that, you know, they, they, this is an example of an art classroom. Um, sure, we have lots of daylight. All classrooms have daylight. All teaching spaces have natural daylight in, but the ability to control that with the screen, uh, making sure that all the spaces have technology. Uh, they're all, they're all um, uh, you know, acoustically friendly so that we be from one space to another, there's not uh, um, you know, uh, there's not that noise transmission from one from one classroom to another. Uh, 
Another example of a classroom, you can see this is a little bit more flexible. There's the, uh, everything's loose. You know, whiteboard is, is loose and movable. You know, ta different tables and chairs. You can see soft seating, hard seating, tables, uh, desks. You know, each one of the classrooms want to try, try to make as flexible as possible. We want to create a building and furniture that allow whatever the teaching environment wants to happen, whether it's a, a teacher giving, giving instruction to students or students giving instruction to students. We want to make sure that the, that the, that the furniture and that the building promotes education is not a hindrance to the, the, the abilities for teachers to teach and students to learn. Uh, talking about those flexible learning spaces, back in the plan, they were the green spaces. And so here's an example of what a learning lab could look like where you've got multiple classes that can get together. Uh, they can get outside of their classroom, maybe two or three third grades, uh, want to be able to join and do it do a, uh, a STEM experiment, a technology experiment, a science. Uh, you, you can see here we've got uh, all the tables and chairs are either on casters, you know, with your rollers. Uh, we have a specific with flexible seating, um, tables and chairs. You know, here's a, a couple examples of this learning lab that has beanbag chairs um, and regular uh, tables and chairs in that same lab. Here's just a, a different shot as we move kind of underneath that space. Uh, in this particular lab, in this building, uh, these, these glass walls actually move um, and allow the learning lab to be opened up into the corridor. Uh, so so the, one of our goals is to try to create as much flexibility um, as possible for different types of learning environment. Because uh, the reality is, is that students learn differently uh, than, when we were, than we were kids and when, when our grandparents were kids. And uh, so we want to make sure that we're designing to give our students the best experience and the best education possible. This is, their, this is their first experience. This is the first time that they get to be in a building. Um, let's, let's, let's create buildings that, that are conducive to that learning environment and, and students can have fun and they can experience positive learning at the same time. Uh, here's an example of a learning stair. Uh, so this is a, uh, a stair that's, that's, in, oh, that's out, out in the corner. Uh, you can see stairs on both sides. So not only is this an opportunity for multiple groups to be able to get together, uh, to see that lecturer, to, to go through his activities, but also it's a way to communicate from the first, to communicate by walk, you know, from, from the first floor up to the second floor and vice versa. Um, this is an example, some examples of media centers where, you know, so we're creating flexible environments in that media center. A media center is a library. Uh, you know, the, there's, they're, they're, they're dynamic. They're, they're moving now. The, the, uh, the days where it was just all a whole bunch of books and, and all students had to be quiet. Um, is, 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 in, is in the past. You know, media centers are now very technology rich. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're an environment where students no longer have to be quiet. They're interactive. They have classrooms inside the media center. Uh, what can we do to, to try to promote all spaces educational and not have spaces that are dedicated just to one function? Uh, you know, quarters are also a great opportunity for us to uh, create learning spaces that are not just in the classroom. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming very common. Uh, my wife is, uh, is a ninth grade language arts teacher, um, and, she, and the two of her four classrooms are called are co lab classes where she's the main teacher and she has a teacher um, uh, that uh, assists her, you know, in that classroom. Uh, and what they do is it's, it's not uncommon for, for the teacher who is assisting her to pull a handful of students out and say, hey, we, we need a little bit more time on this subject and pull those students out and be able to and, and have a space out in the quarter uh, that is that is outside of the, the walking path of the quarter, you know, the hallway, uh, to where they can get together in, in groups of small two or three groups uh, of students, um, and that teacher can be able to, to, to teach in that quarter space. Uh, so this is not this, this is not intended to be a hindrance as far as path of egress or or tables that are better in the way. The intent here is to create nooks and crannies inside that quarter that is very visible. Um, that allows a you know either a teacher or students to be able to go out into that space, still be, be visible, um, and have that small group learning. Um, and this example shows both not only you know tables and chairs in the quarter itself, uh, but also creating nooks that are that are you know, visible, um, where a group a small group can be able to break out of the classroom and be able to go and have a small group learning inside a closed private area. Uh, just another example of a, a small group learning room. You can receive different types of seating, soft seating. Uh, the hokey stools that are kind of a little little wobbly with no back on it, uh, whiteboards that can move around the classroom, uh, technology that, that rolls out of the wall, uh, and you can see it, with, with all images promoting talent. Uh, daylight is so critical to learning. Uh, it, it is such a positive and healthy thing for students to have good, clean uh, daylight uh, coming into coming into the windows uh, for that learning uh, those learning activities. Not just in the, not just not inside the building, but creating learning spaces on the outside of the building. 
Uh, so, you know, this is an example of a secure border or a secure, uh, a secure courtyard uh, that uh, has a gate to be able to allow maintenance to come into the space, uh, but also allows teachers to be able to safely uh, take their students out, you know, into that courtyard, uh, be able to do outside learning, whether it's uh, science or STEM experiments, uh, or something the teacher says, hey, you know, there's not a single person in the room who wasn't excited in April when the team, you know, we had the first beautiful day and the teacher goes, come on, let's go outside for a minute. Like those were, those were the best days, you know, it was always in the spring, it was always wonderful. Uh, so let, let's look at creating uh, environments that are safe, you know, for students um, that where teachers can feel comfortable about going out, um, you know, in them and be able to do some outside learning. Talk a little bit about those, uh, about that dual sided stage. So this is an example of a dual sided stage with a partition. It's a sound partition that goes across. Um, in this case, it's on the gym side. So uh, this partition you can throw balls against. It's, it's a very re resilient uh, partition. Uh, and that folds back and the curtain is just behind it. So, so this, and, and that same door would be on the opposite side. Uh, so so what we're trying to do is just create the most amount of flexibility in all the spaces and try to create as much learning environments as possible and not dedicate any one space to just one function. Uh, there's a couple examples of a media center in that library. You know, Opportunities to have fun. Let's add light color. Let's add you know different textures and circles and squares. Uh, and elementary school doesn't have to be an unfun space. You know, that's, you know and, and you know what's great is paint doesn't cost any more money. Whether it's green or blue or orange, you know we can have those colors and make spaces fun. You know without costing the school division any extra dollars. So let's let's you know let's take those opportunities and, and make make these an enjoyable environment. Uh, this is one of my favorite images uh, because this was a uh, this is this is where uh, the they say, hey, we want, we want a, an earthy theme. What well, we do here to kind of make this, make this, uh, this collaborative learning lab a little bit more exciting? And what we do is we took the bottom floor and we had designs. So basically, it's a, the idea is you turn the tree upside down. So you're kind of standing on the branches and kind of the, the canopy of the tree, you know, and the, and the roots of the tree is up in the ceiling. Uh, and uh, so we did some just bottom graphics on the wall. It was just boring. You know, but we had some fun with it. And you know, it's a, the, the, uh, there's, there doesn't have to be a large additional cost to have fun. You know, when it's part of the design, and it's not coming in after the fact. Uh, just more examples of some flexible, flexible media centers. Um, and then, you know, some common spaces, your quarters, you know, your cafeteria, your classrooms, you know, everything can be you know, have an opportunity for learning. Uh, is the cafeteria is it going to be open to the quarters or is it going to be enclosed? You know, we're putting a lot of technology in cafeterias now where you have speakers and you have projectors. Uh, you know, why not, why not have, you know, cafeteria is, your, your breakfast and lunchtime is a very limited amount of time. So why don't we take that, that dining room and make that a learning, learning opportunity also, or multiple groups can get together. Um, you know, so we'll be anywhere can be, can be a learning space in your school. Uh, so as we move from the pre-K six elementary option, um, uh, part of this option, to the high school, uh, what we're looking at is a, is a single story, uh, seventh and eighth grade addition. Um, and this is, this is shown in, kind of currently in the, in the, in the grass area. Uh, the goal here would be to, to uh, put an addition in so that we have a clear separation of the main core, uh, the main core programs for 7th and 8th grade. Uh, the 7th and 8th grade would still share your gymnasium, your dining room, uh, your media center, your auditorium with the 912 students. Uh, but with this, you know, with this concept, this really allows us for those core classes, the math and the science and, you know, and the English, for 7th and 8th grade to kind of be a little bit in their own separate area in the building. Uh, so there's there's going to be just a small handful of classes that we're going to, that we're going to take. Uh, but the, the good news is that you have a little bit of capacity at your high school to, to convert a couple of those of those high school classrooms into something eighth grade while still keeping a nice separation between the grades. Uh, so as we move from option one, option two, I promise this one won't take as long. So so option number two is uh, uh, we're looking now at a at a, uh, a pre-K through eighth grade. So instead of it being pre-K through six with the last option, it's pre-K through eight. So this is a elementary middle school uh, with this concept. Uh, so with, the, with, this, uh, with this option, we still need to be closing to Taro, uh, Red Oak, and Mahara Hamilton. And one of these days, I will actually say that the whole way without, without uh, saying it wrong. Um, and, the, uh, and again, the middle school, and what we'll be doing is just, instead of putting pre-K through eight all in one building, and we'll talk about the, the concept of having a school in the school uh, with that middle school kind of being its own separate link, we'll show that to you in a few minutes here. Uh, with this option, we'd be looking at, uh, at both capital improvements on the high school and tech center. 
Um, and capital improvements are doing everything from, uh, you know, from fixing things when they're broke, but also kind of, you know, we're doing so many improvements at the high school campus. Those take some opportunities to do some pressure washing and, and you know, and, and doing some other things to the high school as part of that capital improvement program to also give it a, you know, you know, kind of a fresh face, you know, as, as we make, you know, as we look at the, the possibility for a stadium, we look at the, at the new elementary school, let's get the whole campus a little bit along, you know, for that, both the high school and the tech center. Um, and it said, with this option, we would still be looking at a, either a new standing building or an additional high school for the school board office and closing the current building. Uh, some of the pros and cons, you know, the pros, we, we could consolidate down to one campus, going from seven to three buildings. Uh, same thing with construction phasing is that we're looking at constructing the new pre K through 8 building, um, you know, wrapping it up over the spring, moving everybody over the summer when, when the teachers and students come back in the fall, that they're all in the brand new spaces. Uh, you know, this again this allows a greater collaboration of all the teachers because every grade, you know, um, every, every uh, class per grade is going to be in the same building. Um, and it just allows us to have a greater equity amongst the class sizes because with all the third grades, all the sixth grades, all the they're all in the same building. You know, it has a much, we have a much uh, greater ability to keep the, you know, roughly the same number of students in the classes. Um, and again, the, all the elementary, the middle school students, and the high school students are all going to be able to enjoy the athletic facilities on a daily basis at, at the campus. Uh, cons is that the division would be closing the three elementary schools and the middle school. Um, and then the high school, as opposed to the last option, we'll be doing the addition and renovation uh, piece. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, lower, we'll be looking at that capital improvements to the high school um, and, uh, and not a renovation. Okay. So uh, as we're looking at this option, this is the, the cost of the improvements for construction. So the construction of the new pre-K-8, uh, the, uh, the capital improvements and the, and the, uh, the high school and the tech center, along with the, uh, the uh, school board office, we're looking at about the same cost, about a 43 to $48 million uh, cost range for the total project costs, looking, looking at all of those four pieces. Um, when we look at the um, operation, maintenance, transportation, utilities, um, in comparison of what you currently operate at versus what you would with the, uh, with the consolidation, uh, it's just a little bit higher. We're looking at about 1.3, a little over $1.3 million uh, for, uh, for this consolidation um, option under savings based on yes, energy, transportation, uh, operation, and maintenance from what you currently observe. So the site plan looks very similar. Uh, separation of car and bus drop off, areas for parking, uh, playgrounds for uh, for both the uh, uh, the pre K and or next week, uh, for pre K and K. Uh, really, the, the the one of the big differences between uh, option one and option two is that uh, with the, uh, the the six through eight uh, addition is that we would have the opportunity for its own separate administration, um, its own separate entrance. So we talk about a school within a school. Really, that six, seven, and eight, you know, grade uh, facility could, could have its own separate space, including its own parking area for visitors. So, from a design standpoint, so we've been looking still is that, that secure front entrance, you know, administration, nursing guidance, the pre K, -K and then again, just as we said before, each grade level would have its own, you know, first grade, second grade would all have its own own corner, its own floor. Uh, so, the big difference between the last option is is that really. So we could be looking at a, a middle school wing um, on these ad 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 additions. So we have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, along with all of the specials, uh, would be in this wing, its own administration area, and its own collaboration space. But, uh, um, you know, outside the really the only shared spaces that we're looking at for the middle students where they would leave their wing uh, would be looking at gymnasium and cafeteria time. Um, all, we're looking at all of the other specials and their core classes happening inside the, in, inside the 678 degree. And that's what we mean with the school within a school. Yes, it's all one building, but we have the ability to have a, a separation of the, of the pre-K uh, through five and then 678. Uh, we're still looking at that shared stage. You know, the, uh, the, the gymnasium with, with approximately 500 seats, uh, your cafeteria um, and, the, uh, and the kitchen. As we go to the second level, um, in, the, in this option, we would have, we would have uh, an addition over top of the pre-K K, K classrooms. The media center would still be above the uh, would still be above the administration area. We'd have fourth and fifth grade, and then sit at the second floor of the of the, the middle school wing. We'd have eighth grade, and then the arts, sciences, uh, you know, the uh, opportunities for STEM, project leading the way, whatever those programs are defined in that middle school could all be could all be happening um, inside of the uh, the middle school wing. So not only do we have an opportunity to, 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 to change um, uh, how we do education, 
uh, and really move ourselves into 21st century uh, uh, school uh, teaching styles uh, because this, the building would allow us to do that. Um, but we also have the opportunity to create a new face for the school, a new identity. Um, what does that mean? That's, that's a great question because we have a, a long way to go to, to go through the options to find that. Um, and that, and you know, as we're looking at the, uh, um, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, do you know? Do we have more of a modern design with flat roofs? You know, lots of glass. You can see the the high elevation. You know, uh, do we have a more traditional design with you know with a a metal roof and a kind of a traditional school looking? Uh, do we because it's an elementary school? Do we start to introduce uh, colored brick? You know, blues and greens and oranges, um, and having that glazed you know that glazed piece have a little you know, a little bit of fun because it is an elementary school. Uh, do we still go something a little more modern? You know, in this option, we have some larger, larger defined block. You know, we have different color brick uh, along with uh, a metal panel. Uh, you know, this, this in this elementary school, we had a couple different brick, but then we also had uh, both red and blue um, clay of brick on it. So, clay of brick is a really fun material. It's a great opportunity to have to enhance that elevation. Uh, you know, this uh, in this particular building, uh, they said, hey, we really want to have something that's that's was it crazy? That was the word they used, but something that's really dynamic. Uh, they wanted something more modern, you know, so you can see that all the different angles, you know, and this is not just in the elevations, uh, but also uh, in all of the quarters. We actually call it the octopus building because there's no right angles in any of the classroom in the classroom. Room. So imagine a, you know, you go to a classroom and every single wall has a, has a different uh, has a different angle on it, um, and uh, that's what they want. What's what's uh, we have a fantastic opportunity. To uh, to design this building and, and uh, that is specifically for you, for you and your community, uh, to make sure that the design of this, both the, you know on the on the exterior, and the interior, uh, working with the teachers, working with the administration, working with the community to define a brand new building that is specifically for Brunswick County Public Schools. Uh, that uh, um, you know we're, we're, our design, we're desires not to look and say, hey, let's get some other option and just drop a you know a prototype on here and we'll get somebody else's design. Uh, so, as I said before, we have we have three uh, three different site options for the uh, elementary or elementary and middle school. Uh, so this is the first one, uh, which is looking at the so this is the high school campus. Uh, here's your high school, your current athletic stadium, uh, your tech center. This is your bus garage. So uh, the school division owns the property just across the street. I believe it's I believe it's called the game the hog farm. Um, this is what it, uh, is what the old nickname was. Uh, so it's actually a fantastic 46 acre parcel. It's right across the street, and it'd be a great opportunity for us to develop that entire site uh, with, this, with the uh, separation of uh, bus and car drop off on uh, the property. This allows us to kind of put all of the um, your athletic facilities kind of at the at the same location, right behind the high school and the and the tech center. Uh, this option would uh, would relocate uh, the bus garage uh, to another location, and that and that may be in Totero, maybe. Uh, some other location, but the bus garage, uh, because we'd be expanding the athletics, uh, would be uh, would be located somewhere else. Uh, but so the, the biggest positive of both this one and the next option is that all of your educational buildings will be on one campus. Uh, so it's a the so many opportunities that you have between the mentoring, you know, the high school students mentoring elementary and elementary students being able to use some of the high school uh, facilities, you know, in a, in a controlled manner. There's, it's really wonderful to have one campus that everybody's there. Um, that's the, both administration and, and all your, your you know uh, and all your, your students. Uh, so option option B uh, would be to uh, instead of instead of developing uh, the, the property across the street, uh, we can actually look at developing the bus garage. Uh, that uh, positives of this is that we can have shared parking between the tech center um, and the elementary school, um, along with the fact that this this uh, site is is relatively flat. It would be just a little bit easier to construct. Uh, you know, from uh, from building and a site design, uh, and we get the kind of the educational pieces a little bit closer. We can still develop uh, a portion of the of the property across the street to to put the baseball field or softball field or some athletics. Uh, but this is definitely a um, a very viable option to get all the educational buildings on one campus. Uh, option C uh, would would be to actually construct the uh, the new either pre K six or pre K eight uh, school behind Totero. Uh, you actually have enough property behind Totoro Elementary School to construct the new building. Uh, same thing with Basings, we can construct the new building. 
uh, have this wrapped up in the spring, move um, everybody out of the uh, current elementary schools and in or middle school um, into the new facility, demolish the Terra, um, and then develop that as your, as your parking area. Um, and uh, the, the, the current middle school would remain in place. Uh, so the middle school would stay, but the Soterra Elementary School in this option would be demolished. Uh, so the good news is you have enough, um, and it's a relatively flat uh, site, you have enough property uh, behind the Terra to be able to construct that, uh, that new elementary or elementary middle. Okay, so we are going to take a brief five minute break, um, and then we're going we're to talk a little bit about athletics as soon as we come back. So everybody wants to grab some water. Um, and then we'll just refresh back in five minutes. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you. We're gonna uh, we're gonna hop in and talk a little bit about athletics. Um, so the so we have uh, two options for tonight to discuss on uh, um, uh, replacement of the athletic stadium. Uh, so the uh, option A uh, here is, is showing um, a new um, soccer, football, athletic stadium. Uh, and what this is, is, is a uh, bleacher uh, seating uh, for both home and visitors um, with a capacity of 2,000 seats, uh, a new press box, uh, along with the, uh, the bleacher seating would be toilet rooms, um, concessions, tea rooms, um, uh, you know, all, uh, all located. And what we found from an economic standpoint is to locate all of those facilities underneath the bleachers. Uh, it is a cost savings uh, to help utilize that structure of the building as the support for the bleachers. Uh, you know, when we're looking at the, uh, the stadium itself, we're looking at uh, synthetic grass. Uh, so this is a, uh, you know, um, a turf field. Uh, and, uh, and then we're also looking at a um, eight lane all weather track. So uh, what this will allow you to do is that if you have the desire to have uh, to have uh, uh, regional events, you know, with an eight-lane track and synthetic grass, this this will have, have a, uh, give you an opportunity to have more uh, of your neighbors um, being able to utilize your facility. Uh, so we're looking at uh, so synthetic grass, uh, stadium lighting, walkways. So we talked about the uh, eight-lane over the track, um, and and this uh, this costing also includes all of your field events. Uh, so that's your pole vault, your high jump, your long jump, uh, uh, you know, discus, uh, badminton, you know, all of those events would also be allocated, you know, within, within the stadium complex. Uh, new scoreboard, uh, tennis courts, a new baseball field, and a new softball field. Um, in this option, we would be looking at um, the, the sand mix uh, and natural grass for both baseball and softball in this option. Uh, so uh, we add up all the numbers, we're looking at a, um, a a probable cost rate of about 7.3 to 8.8 .8 million dollars for the entire complex, and that is including uh, new facilities for all outdoor athletics. When we look at um, uh, athletic seating option B, uh, so now there's a couple different differences. Is that one is we're looking at two synthetic grass fields, not one. So this option has two synthetic grass fields. Uh, here would be your main one for your stadium with your eight-lane track. Uh, you know your uh, your your seating. Um, in this case, we're showing the seating for 2,500, uh, which is a little bit more than the uh, than the last one, uh, than option A. Uh, we're also including the toilet rooms, concessions, and locker rooms in this option. Uh, so we're looking at two synthetic grass fields. So your primary field uh, would be accommodating for, for football, for soccer, and for softball. Uh, your second field would also accommodate for uh, football, soccer, again, all the sports, field hockey, lacrosse, whatever, whatever your sports have, um, and baseball. Uh, would be would be on this field. Uh, so you know, along with all of the, the walkways, your ticket booths, your fencing, uh, so you're eating all with the track, your high jump, long jump, pole vaults, scoreboards, tennis courts, lighting, um, or the total cost range of about 8.2 to 9.9 .9 million. Uh, so the big differences between option A and B is going from one synthetic grass field to two um, and increasing the, the seat capacity from uh, from 2,000 to 2,500. A big part of that cost is, is not just the, the seats themselves, uh, but code requires us to have so many toilet rooms when we have so much seating. Uh, so, uh, you know, with the uh, you know with the larger amount of seats, we have to have more more restrooms for uh, for for men, women, and for families. Uh, and uh, um, and those are the, so the two athletic options. Uh, both of them are located at your current facility, so we wouldn't be proposing to move it to a different to a different location. Dr. Shea, we'll talk about the timeline. Um, you'll see here with the timeline, and I only included dates from the last few months. As I said, we've had several meetings over the course of the last three years. Um, up until now, you'll see that we had the facilities committee meetings. Um, we actually had a joint um, BOS board meeting actually back in March before this. This is our last uh, community meeting presenting um, on the options that the board is considering. Um, we have the survey information that's been going out and we will need that data by June 3rd, 2021. So since you are all the last location, please make sure that you have an opportunity to go to our website and complete the survey. Um, the, the board def, definitely needs your, and values your feedback on that um, so as they go to make a decision. And then June 14th is our regular school board meeting um, with the potential for our board to vote on an option um, we actually have a joint BOS meeting. I know I had it here for June 15th. Okay. 
I did something for us. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Um, we have a joint, uh, I did that last night as well. <laughs> we have a joint um, board and BOS meeting on two, Wednesday, June 2nd at 6 p.m. at Brunswick High School in the cafeteria. Um, so that they, we just put a potential date there so that we're able to meet with them prior to their meeting in June, June 16th. And then from there, um, if this is approved, July 2021 through February 2022, um, will be the design phase of the facility option and in february 2022 we place options out for bid um, with public notice um, and then once the bids are accepted then we work with again um, in march or april 2022 with the potential for opening a new facility um, and having everything complete by the fall of 2024. so that's our timeline of course any of those are subject to change um, at this time, do you mind coming up to me? At this time, we will begin the public input. Go ahead. Say it again. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. We will begin the public input portion. Please remember um, when you come up, you do have three minutes. We have the timer set up there. I know for me, I'm more of a visual person. So it's just easier if I'm speaking and looking at the timer. Um, Mrs. Clary will go over the guidelines for speaking tonight. Um, we will, again, we will not be able to answer you at this moment, um, but she's capturing everything that you're saying so that she'll have it there. Um, and then we will post those answers um, to, your, to your questions online. So at this time, Mrs. Clary, do we have anyone that signed up? No, ma'am. If there is anyone that's interested in speaking, could you go back and sign up with Ms. Clary so we can have you come up here to speak, please? Once you get your sign up, she'll call you. Anyone wishing to speak this time in a public forum, forum will have three choices to participate. Submitting a response in writing to Mrs. Clary no later than 9 a.m. on the day of the meeting. Submitting a voice recording to Mrs. Clary no later than 9 a.m. on the day of the meeting. Or appearing in person on the day of the meeting. All questions will be collected and a complete list of answers will be available on our division website following the meeting. The school board welcomes public input and is encouraging participation in these public forums. Please be mindful of the time limitation in order to give everyone wishing to speak an opportunity. As a reminder, it is inappropriate at a public meeting to make personal attacks, to be defamatory, or disparage individuals or identifiable groups. Nelson Burchette. Good afternoon. I saw uh, Dr. Jett's uh, schedule with the uh, schedule, and my concern was uh, in regards to the survey events that have read over. And I'm actually from Sturgeon, so I drove here from Warfield to get here. Um, this says that the survey data is due by June 3rd. Tomorrow, begins the Memorial Day holiday. Monday is Memorial Day. We only have like two more days left. So if the majority of us here are school board, board of supervisors, and two or three retired people, where are the families that really need to be in the service? And I'm quite sure there'll be a few on, uh, online. Um, 
And also, as they said, with the incentive of camp. But what about the private citizen that we're beyond that point now? Where do we fit in this package? Uh, because it is a tax outlet. I noticed where the Board of Supervisors did change the tax base. However, as that changes, I would think that some of the design of the school will change also. Um, and it appears that my choice is to have the school with the bus below you. That way everyone is on the same side of the road. If you go to the hall farm, cause a turning there and to the school, so there's additional traffic. You need to keep that in mind. Athletic field, that needs to be reviewed much more in depth. Thank you. Uh, Alice Pritchett. Good evening to everyone. Um, I'm all for the school, but only problem I have, I want to know where the money is coming from. And really, I want to know where the money is coming from. Are y'all going to raise taxes? Or how y'all planning on paying for all this? That's my main question. That's all I want to know. Dr. Majette, that's all I have, Sanjay. Does anyone else like to speak? Would anyone else like to speak? First of all, Dr. Majette, oh, I'm sorry. Rodney Gilliam. Hello, Dean Ball. Uh, the only one was not playing on saying anything, but this is an important time for Brunswick County. You now, we go out and we buy, take vacation, do all kinds of other stuff with our money. And I'm certainly not trying to tell you how you should spend your money, but these schools are old. These schools are shot. We have a chance to get some new facilities. We have to take advantage of it and stop making excuses about how much we're going to spend. We have to do it. We, are, we don't have a choice. We're not Chesterfield County. We're not in Rico. We don't have all these industries in this county. So Look after me, it's common sense. We're going to have to pay more tax money. We're just going to have to bite the bullet, may have to cut back on some stuff, and we may have to do our budget a little bit better. But we have to make it happen. Tighten up on your bill, cut back on a little stuff, plan throughout the year to set a little bit aside to get these real estate or personal property taxes paid. And then number two, I've been working with folks for years, and all I hear them talk about, we're going to the softball game. Johnny is playing softball. This person is playing basketball. We got a chance to get uh, this stadium done. We don't need to cut back on the stadium. You got to think big. You don't know who going to want to come in this county and participate and have their team uh, want to play at the stadium. So the stadium is important. We have to have it. Let's pull together. Let's stop making excuses. We can't keep thinking that Brunswick County can't do anything. Brunswick County can do stuff. We can rise up. We can pull together. And we can get this stadium done for our kids. Our kids are our future. It don't bother you when you look at that Chesterfield County and Henrico and some of these other schools. It's not bothering you when you ride up 58 and you see what they're doing in Mecklenburg County, and you think we can't do it here? 
We can do it, we're going to do it, and it's going to be successful. My youngest is 80. My youngest is in the eighth grade, he's going on to the ninth grade. We got a, a, a son, this daughter that's 25, we got a son that's 30, they've been through the school system. You honestly think that I want to see my young son had to continue to put up with these old rundown buildings? No, it's not going to happen. We got Dr. Majette came in here. She's leading the way. I see you, Mr. Jones. I thank you that the 10-year thing is gone. And we're talking about doing it now. Let's get it done. Thank you. Anyone else? Glenda Gilliam. Good evening. How's everyone? Throughout COVID-19, we've had some struggles. We've all come together tonight for the common goal of getting new facilities. We need the new facilities. Now is the time when we need to come together as a community to make it happen. We pulled our sleeves up to get the COVID-19 vaccine. I was one of them. Skeptical or not, I did it. So we need to come together as a community and make this happen as well. It makes a difference. We can make a difference. It's our time to shine, not just for us, but for our kids, for our future, for the kids that are coming up behind us that are going on, that will come back. They will move back to our community. Revenue will succeed. Revenue is forthcoming. We can do this as a community. Brunswick County strong. What does that mean to you? Brunswick County strong. We can do it. Anyone up? Nicole Young. Good evening. Um, speaking on, on behalf of a, a parent, uh, I guess my heart kind of hurts that um, we did not, or we do not have a, a, a good turnout of parents to come and just to hear um, what the options are, what the opportunities are to not only make our county better, but for the success of the young people and, and, the, and the students. So I guess my thing is, what can we do to kind of inform the parents more, to get them more involved? Because the parents are the ones that we're going to need to, to support this. Yes, we do need the community, but if we don't have the parents supporting this and not coming out to hear about it, we're going to still be stagnant because we do need we need the support of the parents, and so that's I think that's what my heart hurts for the most is if we don't have we have very few parents that are here to hear something that we're trying to make great for our kids. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? If anyone else would like to say anything, I would be more than willing to sit back down if anybody else has anything to say. I really do, I really appreciate y'all taking time to come up here and make a comment, whether it's one minute or three minutes. And uh, I'm really excited. I really can't say how this is gonna turn out because I really don't know, but I, I just tell you, I'm really excited to look at these buildings and how it would be to pull up in this county and see those beautiful buildings, our ballpark. And I'm just gonna say I'm excited. I'm gonna leave it there. Dr. Jet, you and your entire team, again, nice setup. Josh, great presentation as always. And I, I just thank y'all all again. I think we all know how important our students are in this county. And uh, mine are gone. I don't have any more in the school system. Don't know that I'll ever have any grandkids here, but I still care about the kids in this community and the ones that haven't been born yet. I think a lot of us are in that same boat. We 
you know, they are the future of not just this county, but this whole world that we live in. So I'm going to end that there by saying thank y'all all very much for coming out. Y'all all have a safe trip home.